Well, hello, and welcome back to another scary, scary edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South, my friends. <laughs> I got some scary, scary stuff for you. I am your host, Stephen LaBooth. I will scare the pants off of you. Well, hope everybody's everybody's having a great week, man. Hope you're having a great spooky time. Having a good time. Life's going good for me. Just living life, podcasting, and telling some scary stories, baby. It's all fun. But, yeah, this week I didn't get a whole lot of research done because Saturday and Sunday I had to do a lot of computer work. Well, I've had that same computer now for three years, ever since I started, started the podcast, so... I had to go back and take stuff out, erase stuff, delete stuff, put stuff in files. Yeah, I had a big computer weekend. Fun, fun. I freaking hated it. Uh, but I got caught up on some of my scary podcasts listening to. And so, but yes, next week uh, is going to be our uh, 150th uh, episode, guys. Can't believe it. Just want to say thanks, 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 thanks to everybody. Thank you, thank you. Keep uh, telling your friends about it. Spread the word, man. But since I didn't get nothing done, done today, and it's so close to our anniversary, guys, uh, I'm going to go back in time to some of you people, might not, some of you people, that sounds so rude. Some of you guys and girls haven't been here since the uh, we first, or I first started it. So I think I'm going to go back in the vault, and we're going to go check out an episode, and uh have it ready for you. So, give me five minutes. Let me go dig in the vault and see what we got back here for you. I know I got some old scary stuff to talk about. All right, guys. I got in the vault and I got it into episode 12. So, here it is. I hope you enjoy. And welcome back to another podcast with uh, ghost stories told from the South. I am your glorious host, Lexi LeBooth. And I am your host, Stephen Lebooth. We're going to tell you some scary stories. And our last name's really not Lebooth. We're just being crazy. <laughs> but our last ready. name's really Booth. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. Really for you new listeners. But are y'all ready for some scary stories told from Uncle Boo? Well, <laughs> before we do that, we, we have to uh, give everybody a shout out. Yes, we do. And we got lots of loves. We lots got, of loves. We have a new state person. Nature, yes. New state person. We have um, a new listener in Alabama. We noticed that we got another listener in Alabama, man. It's is this is really cool, guys, because we're really starting to get like more countries, and more uh, U.S. towns, and it's it's amazing. We love it. So thank you, thank Less, you very much. When I mean, golly, Alabama put us. I bet you that's our twelfth, thirteenth state. Just in the U.S. Yeah. So. Where we've, I mean, heck, and everybody keeps piling on more and more stuff, and we love it, guys. Like we said, you need to email us too. Yeah, email us, and you can DM us or whatever. You Anything. Feel comfortable with, you know. Lexi's gonna give y'all a shout out, and then she's gonna go down the list of where we're at and how y'all can get a hold of us, because I know you guys want to. We really were, we really would like y'all's input, you yes. know. Yes. Something that would be awesome, because we're starting to get a lot of listeners, and I know y'all hear us for more than six minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want to give everybody a shout out from this is the states first. We're gonna do the states first. So from Texas, Washington, California, Ohio, North California, North Alabama. California. You mean North Carolina? Yes, Cal Carolina. I'm I was sorry. like, wait a minute. There's no North California. <laughs> North uh, Crackalacky. I wrote it down wrong. North uh, Carolina, yeah. Alabama, <laughs> Georgia, Michigan, Tennessee, Utah, Illinois, North Dakota, and the District of Columbia. Mm. And then, We're going to get some white powder down there, boys. Mm -hmm. And then we also want to give a shout out to Bangladesh, the UK, yes. and Ireland. That's awesome, guys. And hey, I know you guys in Ireland, man, you got some creepy stories, too, y'all could tell us, man, because y'all got a... A lot of good old folk legends and lure up, you know, there. Y'all been there a long time. Same thing with uh, the United Kingdom. Yeah. They have a lot of creepy places in the UK. So. Yes. And also, we are, you know, our email is uh, ghoststoriestoldfromthesouth at gmail.com. Check it out. Check it out. Twitter and our Instagram are uh, South Texas Ghost. It is spelled S O U T H T X 
G H O S T. And um, we are on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, and uh, Google. Yes, yes, we're on Google Play too. The only one we really haven't got a lot of play on, I've noticed, is iTunes. But like Stitcher, Stitcher, we're doing good on. Spotify, we're doing excellent on. We also don't know how to work iTunes. <laughs> yeah, we. I'm, like, when we're like using the app, we do, but like we don't know how to do the background stuff. So like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still learning that one. I mean, but I don't, I don't understand it. I got, I got that one for our uh, iPhone people, and. No one's used like, it. I'm an iPhone user, but I use Spotify. My cousin's an iPhone user, but she uses Spotify. Well, her boyfriend is an iPhone user, but he uses Apple Music. Yes. So like. So we're trying to get use. we're trying to get as many platforms under our belt. So y'all got a bigger we got a bigger brand of ways to get our stories out to you because we really enjoy doing this, guys. Yeah, yes. It's we awesome do. sauce. So, um, do you want to start, or you want me to? Uh, who started last time? I've all, I've always really started. So. Ah, go ahead. <laughs> you go first. Okay. I'll check her. I'll check the Facebook. And that's another thing. We're gonna have a Facebook coming up soon too, guys. Oh yes, yes. We're still working on our kinks, though. Okay. So this one is um, Boulder Hot Springs in Montana. Boulder Hot Springs. Um. So I'm not. I'm guessing Boulder Hot Springs is like the area. Mm hmm. Montana. Okay. Yeah. Well, I wasn't positive. Because Montana's if it the was state, like... and uh, Boulder Springs is just another town. Okay. Well, I wasn't positive if it was like a town because it did mention like a lot of buildings and everything being like made, and it's talking about buildings in here. So I was like, I don't know if that's, I don't know my geographic stuff like he does. I don't know a lot. <laughs> yeah. She, ge the geographic stuff wasn't her uh, wasn't forte. <laughs> I'm more of the history and, you know, knowing where my places are. But I'm not very good at math, so if it's percentage, yes. Lexi's more or better at the research than anything. But anyway, so. Look what Skyline's friend wrote. <laughs> Sorry. I made what an is... appreciation post on Facebook before we just now came in here to do our little podcast thing. And uh, I gave a shout out to me, my dad, and my cousin for doing our podcast stuff and Everyone was like, what? Just commenting on it and everything. So, um, anyway. So, there's apparently, like, a lot of buildings on the site. Well, and, too, like, uh, Montana, I believe. They're, 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 I mean, it was, it was like one of the old west towns. I believe there was a, there was a lot of little um, uh, gold towns, mining towns and stuff oh. right, in Montana. Yeah, well, that was Oh, really and, two cattle ranches. Cattle ranches were big, were big up there. See, this is why we're, we have him here, because he knows all this. <laughs> So, in Boulder Hot Springs, there's, like, a lot of buildings and stuff. But, like, I guess the main site we're talking about, there's, like, a lot of places that were there. Broke, uh, uh, what is the word for broke down? Well, buildings. Abandoned? No, um, like, they tore them down. Oh, uh, demolish. Demolished and everything like that, and then rebuilt, like, over and over and over again. So, the... Um, first builder or person that like started doing whatever a building it's this one's kind of confusing so just kind of like say put or you'll you'll figure it out anyway the first person slash builder started on a building which ended up being a saloon slash slash bathhouse in um 1863 so and then it got enlarged in uh 1881 and like including in that it went from the salon and the bathhouse got larger than became a hotel so yeah. mm. and they only did that because they were like oh um let's use it for the rich and then because we always have this issue with building they're like oh we can only do it for 50 people when they ended up needing to be like well, they're not being like, oh, let's have a hundred people check in rooms. There's only fifty people that can stay here. <laughs> oh my gosh! So it's like about in five minutes they're full. Up, oh, sorry guys, you should have came earlier. Yeah, that was yeah, that was their issue too. So September of the same year of um, 1881, the the original builder that started everything, he um he died of a smallpox. I don't know what is that smallpox. Mm hmm Smallpox was really big back then. It was. What is it? It's basically like chickenpox. But you get you get like with chicken pox. I can't. I see. I had chicken pox as a kid, 
And I know you break out of the bumps and you itch. I don't think you have a fever, but with the one you're saying, the smallpox, mm -hmm. that one I think you break out with a fever and all that, and it can kill you. Yeah, because he died of that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then back never, then, yeah. what they would do when they're uh, when someone died in the house or with the smallpox, they'd burn the house down because they didn't want to get contagious. So they wouldn't. <laughs> a lot of times they didn't bury them; they just burn them in the house. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, well, so I didn't say where he died, but he did die of smallpox. And after he died, so he died before he could finish the hotel and everything like that. Like, it wasn't finished. So the new owners came in, and they bought it and everything, and they finished it. Oh, my God. So in then 1890, there was a 10-year lease put on the property. Um, and then over between 1863 and... Now it's had like several owners. It's one of those buildings where oh it's my been God. like tossed around. Yeah. So, um, and then in 1909, a millionaire bought it. And then in 1910, it went under um, reconstruction. Like oh, um, yeah. They started renovations. Reno reno uh, yeah, renovations. And then in 1940, it was sold to someone else. Man. And then. So they, the 1940 person that bought it, they were the same owners for like 35 years. But then it foreclosed in 1989. It never said why, but um, yeah. Then it got returned to one of the original owners after it foreclosed. So oh like, my gosh. Yeah, so I didn't, I'm guessing they were kind of older. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it was one of the originals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then in um, 1990, they purchased it. The one of the original owners purchased it, and then they re they renovated everything again. Jesus Christ! And then it opened in 1991. So, like I said, just between this, it's had like I don't even know how many owners. Well, golly, it's since been renovated like twice. Yeah. And that's Jeez. not counting the original construction. Construction. construction? I wasn't say structure, but then I said construction, so I mixed the two. <laughs> but yeah, so it was um weird. Um, and then also they say Halloween stirs up. And like abrupts the spirits. Ooh, like, so that's a place to stay the night and do a podcast on Halloween. On Halloween, Boulder yes. Springs. I gotta remember that one. And also, it's like the history and stuff, like 135 years. Dang. Just on that place. I bet you so, that's got a lot of history there. Yeah. Well, especially like back then. I mean, because I mean, it was just rough times back then. You could get shot for anything. <laughs> well, and um, so there was a prostitute that was murdered. In the um, office area. I'm not trying to be rude, but there's a lot of um, Process, prostitutes motels murdered. and hotels from that era where prostitutes got killed yes, and stuff. Well, because a lot of the prostitutes back then, what they would do, Lex, they would, uh, you know how some people live in motels for a week or two at a time and they just pay that week for rent? That's what the girls would do. Yeah, cause they didn't, yeah, they would yeah. do that. And then some stranger comes along and they're like, ah, and they kill them. Yeah. So... But, yeah, I've noticed that in a lot of the stories. Like, there's always, like, a prostitute or, like, in the conspiracy theories that I'm doing with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm doing my other podcast with my sister. Not a lot of them are, like, unsolved mysteries for prostitutes. Yes. So, like. Well, because back then, too, even even today, when a prostitute gets killed or something, they're like, huh, she's just a prostitute. Yeah, they don't really care. Yeah. So, anyway, she was murdered in an old office area. It didn't say, like, wh from where or whatever. It just said old office area, so I'm sorry. I don't have too much details on that. Well, you should have brought the blue uh, blueprints. <laughs> Shut up. She was uh, actually stabbed by a mining executive. Oh, my God. And I'm guessing that that was her client, and he was just like, ah, uh, bye. I, I don't really it might have, It'd probably be a dispute over money. She was like, would you owe me and he was like, 20 no, bucks? And she's like, no, I don't. I'm just giving you 10 because you, yeah. you know. And then they also called her the Lady of the Night. And in the hotel or whatever it kind of is now, she, you can smell her perfume because mm. she wore, like, a lot of perfume, like, so you can smell it. And there is a uh, – you can hear footprints. Footprints. You can hear footsteps. Oh, and get this. Guess what you can see? Just take a gander. What oh, a that? lady in white. Yes. I'm not going to bust – I'm not going to bust the bubbles for my stories, but – uh, and two of the stories I'm going to tell tonight, there is a lady in white. See, I don't understand, like, how the lady Me neither. The lady, I mean. Like, I don't, like, it's, that's one well, phenomenon cause, that I don't understand. 
And that's what I don't get either because these women didn't die in white dresses. I mean, yes. some of them might have. Well, but and it's like I don't know the it's, different eras of this. They all can yeah. all be one person. So well, like, I mean, it's not the same chick, but it's just. It's I mean, they all wear a white her, dress. Like, they call her like the woman in white or the lady. Yeah. And how how like how many times that one person's in the story? I know. Or like, but you also don't know if it's the original lady in white and how many. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's, it probably just a lot of it is what they wore back then. But there's some. I mean, I don't get it because there's like the story I'm gonna tell. And it tells about that, but she wasn't wearing white. I mean, she might have been wearing white. They didn't say what she was wearing, but she wasn't. Wasn't wearing like a night get like. Yeah. Because the lady in white, like you, can, like she's wearing like the old timey like. Yeah, like neat, the like, angle link, ankle link, uh, nightgowns. We, yeah. Like, people wear like t-shirts to bed now. Yeah. So like I, I that or they go nude. So like <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. We go in our scrubbies. So that's weird. Um, and also you can feel like cold spots like you'll be walking they say and they'll be like you'll just like get cold instantly like you're walking mm. in a freezer section see and i've never had that i've like seen stuff but i've never really felt any cold spots or anything well, like, like that we have talked about this in the previous uh, pre i can't i'm talking too fast i'm sorry i needed a podcast she just I'm getting too excited. yes she gets excited for podcast um anyway we all do in our previous episodes we have talked about like our house being haunted well like when we feel, I have felt like a cold rush of air go past me. See, I ain't never felt anything like that. And I played it off as, oh, a ghost ran past me. But like when I'm back here on the uh, studio and I'm doing research for the podcast and stuff, whether it's this one or Borderline or my sports podcast, yeah. <coughs> at the corner of my eye, sometimes I can see like something going across the door right there up and down the hallway. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> Um, and they also say there's like a really, really strong energy. And it, oh like, gosh, and you can feel it when you walk in. See, that's yes. another thing. I've never really been somewhere and felt like just. Yeah, and a lot of these places, places that's how they say it is. Like you walk in, you're like, whoa. That's how one of the stories I, I'm gonna tell. They're like when they walked in, they said they just felt fear and just. Yeah. Um, and also, I guess so. I guess because the prostitute had a man kill her, so like they say, any man that walks in oh. the hotel or whatever, they like get pushed or tugged on or like they feel a sensation of like she's like oh it's a man men killed me yeah and they also i don't understand this one but it might just be like over time you know they um her they can hear children running up and down the hallways and stuff like that so yeah and then they um can see they've seen the murdered prostitute in the hallway oh my god um and she they have seen her like at the end of the hallway with like a big smile a twinkle, a twinkle in her eye, and just like disappear. Nah, see that's creepy. I'd like, be like vanish, man. So, I mean, I just I can't all believe that the dang lady in white like is a, in another story. I'm getting really uh, this is kind of <laughs> I'm getting tired of having to say lady in white was in my story again. <laughs> like she's in every freaking story. It's like I don't. That's one thing that I kind of want to get into is like the phenomenon, phenomenon. Of the lady in white. Oh yeah, because I kind of want to understand like, the origin of it. Like, I like the origin, but like everything of it. Because if you look at the stuff, like there's so many reported incidents or something of like the lady in white, the woman yes. in white. And I don't get it. I get. I I can understand why they call her that because they see her in white. But what I don't get is how she always ends up in like a gown. And like half a time. I mean, because she'll die in like regular clothes. Yeah. Only one, I mean, it's just like the lady of the, over there in Dallas, the lady of the lake, the lady yeah. in white. She's the same thing. She's, a, what was it? She died of a drownings, one of the stories, and another one's the car crash coming home from a dance or something. Yeah. You know, but and then. like they don't, normally like you see the ghost and what they died in or like what they used to wear. Yes, but, like, but I've noticed. Seen, like, their pajamas. Yeah. That's what I don't get. I, I mean, it's like a lot of them just come back as a lady in white. So it's weird. I don't. Yeah. I don't know, but okay, that's pretty much mine. <laughs> we had a little. That's lady yours. <laughs> so, uh, what you, what your first story for us, Daddy O? My first story is I'm gonna finish up what we was talking about on episode 11, the uh, Turnball Canyon. Oh, the one where the um, <coughs> Indians, uh, the Indians would be dragged into. Yeah, remember that's the ones where the Indians they was really scared of that place. It's called uh, they I can't remember the name of it now, but they have the name. The name of it comes from uh, the dark forest because the forest is so thick, the sunlight doesn't penetrate in there much. 
so it's dark. So the Spaniards, when they came over, and they're you know they started their missions, they would drag them into the place that scared them the most and say, oh, yeah, and they would be like, you be a Christian or die. Yeah. That's messed up. And, and then yeah. they thought by dragging them into the forest like that, that um, it would over, it would, uh, how do you say it? That it overcome their fears. That's what the Spaniards thought they was doing was helping them out. But Jesus, could you imagine, you know, you're sitting there in your little village, you know, and your family's all there. And then these Spaniards come in and say they're your friend. And then they start dragging you into a forest that you know is bad. And you just, oh, God. Yeah, that, I, that's what I can't. <laughs> I'd be like, bye, I can't do that. Okay, <laughs> so well, let me make sure. I'm going to make sure real quick. I should have done this before he got on air. I'm a ding dong. But let me see where I left off on the turn bike. Yeah, sorry. The turn like ball. I said, we're still trying to figure out some issues. And, uh, we don't oh, okay. To the last one. This was, uh, okay, I left off with the cult, remember? Oh, yeah, because that cult was stealing yeah, kids. Yeah, that cult was stealing kids and stuff. And by the time the people got, because remember that guy snuck up there and watched them and yeah, he went down. Yeah, and he and he was like, oh, my God. You know what they're doing up there? there and, they were all gone. Yeah, and by the time they believed them, it was too late. And like you said, the kids and everybody was gone. And they yeah. thought they was, you know, giving them, they, mm, they <laughs> thought that they was get, getting kids for all their cults in the surrounding areas. They, they, they didn't think it was just them. They thought they had like a little crime, not a crime, but a a circuit or yeah. whatever you want to call they it. Just like yeah. Blew it off. Okay, so that was uh, in the depression when all the cult stuff started. Well, then in about the nineteen uh, after they got the cult ran out of there, they uh, <laughs> but uh, back on but real quick on the cult stuff, there had, there hasn't been any reportings of kids missing or anything like that. But they still see signs of devil worship and stuff when they go there. Sometimes, still? yeah, sometimes they don't know if it's kids being kids, you know, but they'll see graffiti writing to say Jesus die. So they don't know if it's just kids being, you know, happy, funny, because, oh, we're in the bad canyon. Excuse me, guys. Okay, in the 1930s, guys, in the canyon, there was an as uh, asylum built, but they never said the name of it. But it was open in the can. It was open at Tur in Tur uh, Turnbull Canyon. The patients came from uh, how do you say that one? Pew Pewty Pew Pewtree. Pew, Pew, yeah, Pewtree Hill. I want to say. Yeah, Pewtree here. The, the Pewtree Hill in surrounding places. It was supposed to be a place of healing, but it wasn't. It was like normal asylums, and they just. I mean, treated them like shit. Yeah, I mean, and they didn't really know the doctors what they were doing. They was just trying to do all this crazy shit to fix the problems. So they was doing anything on the patients because if they they looked at it this way, if they died, they died. Oh well. That's, that's well, because a lot, like I said, a lot of people back then, Lexi, like, if they had money, and even if their kid, yeah, they didn't was, care. They you know, like, our, our cousin Jared, you know, he's got ADD. Yeah. Back then, they would ship you to an insane asylum. You weren't crazy. You just had ADD, man. Yeah, if you had the slightest bit of issues, you were gone. Yeah, and some, and like if you if you came from a rich family, they would give them money to keep you there. Yeah, which is messed yeah. up. But it didn't help anybody. But nobody really knows what happened there. But the spirits still haunt the place because it only lasted 10 years. And here's what's so weird that is. That is the shortest asylum. Yes, it only lasted 10 years, and that's why there's no records of anything. Dude, normally, like, they have, like, a huge thing at 10 years, yeah. like a lawsuit or something, and they're like, oh, we'll change, but they never do. Yeah, this one just got burnt mysteriously. Yeah. Okay. But it never did say if the government was coming down on them or there was reports so of them like, neglect does it even stand anymore like it's down it's, it's there's well there's it's it there it didn't like burn completely down i oh, guess so you can still like parts of it and stuff yeah there's still parts of it you can see because wait till you tell, you, tell i tell you some of its other stuff when the people would explore the place you know now they get this is what we're talking about they get a, a, all of a sudden they start getting panic attacks and the field it's just really, really, really scared and just. Oh gosh. Yeah. No, I can't. <laughs> well, in the 1960s, a group of the Pinutri Hill teenagers went hiking through the canyon one day, and they had stumbled across the old uh, asylum. Well, they was going through, and I guess uh, it didn't burn completely down. Like I said, it was a mysterious fire, but just like the 
the offices and stuff burnt. Well, the yeah. paperwork and all that was. Yeah. Like they were trying to get, like, hide yeah. that there ever was evidence. The fire was there and kind of spread. And, I mean, it got a good chunk of the building. There's not a whole lot left by now. But by the time these kids went in the 60s, there was still a good, decent part to explore. Well, they was it was all, like, crumbled to the ground. Yeah. Too. Well, they was exploring it. And, of course, being kids, one of the kids got in the electric chair. The one where they used it for shock treatment. Oh, God. Now, let me remind you, this was in the 60s. This place burnt down in, like, the 40s. So there's been no electricity there for how many years? Do the math. Like 20. About 20? Right. He gets in the chair, and then he straps everything onto him, and he's like, he, you know, hits him or, you know, puts the deal to his skin and starts going, ah, oh, yeah. Pretending. Well, yeah, his friends think he's joking around, so they're all laughing. But then when smoke started coming from his clothes and his hair started turning black, it was too late, and he died. What the Yes. So he was pretending, and then he actually was yes. electrocuted to death. And they didn't know what to do. There's what the? Hell? I mean, they went to get him, but well, by the if, like if the touches, and they would have got electrocuted too. Yeah, they didn't know what to do because I mean, come on, there's no electricity there. Bet you the cops thought they were crazy. Or yeah, like killed him or something. Yeah, the, they said the cops and everybody said it was all fishy, but the kids swore by it. They were like, "That's what happened. We weren't joking around, or no one did this to us." He got in the chair playing around and freaking really got fried what the heck? yeah <laughs> that's okay that's when you run <laughs> yeah I think that's the kind of stuff that makes me not want to like explore <laughs> yes oh lord yeah his folk like i said his clothes started you know catching on fire and stuff and yeah it was it was Wait, a bad okay, deal so the asylum it was built on those grounds right yes whose idea was that <laughs> I don't know, but that's weird though. How mysteriously only lasted ten? It lasted ten years, and then the mysteriously, you know, burnt. Well, I bet you it's because of like how you said there was like well the cult there and everything. The cult there, and then the Indians already thought the place was cursed land. Yeah, so it didn't help, and then I bet you everything that happened and all the didn't help with the mental patients that were already yes. like dying and everything. So and they were they just had the experiments there. They were. Adding to the 1960s to then, that's kind of when everything started coming out in the medicines and stuff, and it started becoming like, oh, you don't need this, this, and this. Yeah. So like, you know, kind of, you know, probably someone just mm -hmm. set a fire to it and was like, or like you said with the electric thing. Yeah, that's crude. Like, that's... Oh, you want to get yeah. on the land? And it has that fire. Yeah, and it hasn't been no electricity there in decades. That is weird. And there's been sightings of kids hanging from the trees. You'll be hiking through there or something, and you'll feel uh, see kids hanging from a tree, and they say if you look at them long enough, they'll open your eyes and look back at you and disappear. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. That's the biggest thing they say they, they, they see there is like dead spirits of the kids. We're not going to that place. And then listen to this. You know Richard Ramirez, right? The, yeah, the night's He night. was uh, known to be part of a cult in that canyon. Yeah. Wow. It's just a creepy old canyon with a lot of... Maybe that's the cult that made him think he was the devil. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. But, I mean, it's just a weird... I mean, come on. Well, you got to think, too. Them Indians got drunk down there and got killed. Like then the kids, kids got there. killed. And then whatever happened with the insane, with the asylum, and we don't know how many people died in the kid, fire. Yeah, and then that, and then that kid, kid got electrocuted. Yeah, but people, like I said, pe people even be going through the uh, forest and get just this bad feeling, bad vibes. When they're going hiking and that stuff. That is one place we will never explore. So we're going place. hiking there. We're going to do it during the day, though. I don't though. care how much money I get paid. I'm not hiking there. Come on, guys. Send us your emails. Keep downloading this to get us more likes <laughs> and more money so we can go do that and take Lexi. You'd have to give me a horse And then if I see I that think. shock treatment chair, I'm going to say, Lexi, there it is. Get in it. Nope. One of the kids <laughs> and dad will take them there and make them be like, huh? Take somebody you don't like. That's crazy, man. I honestly don't know what I'd do if I actually seen like something. I mean, I've seen some stuff, but well, it, when I've seen, seen it, like, when I see it, it only lasts for a couple seconds. We haven't seen like conjuring stuff yet, or like yeah, I would. <laughs> like if that happened, I don't think we we would lose our minds. Yeah. We'd be like uh, <laughs> talk about the problems we got now. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing the San uh, Haven Sanatorium. Or it's also called the State Tuberculosis Sanatorium. Oh. In San, San, San Haven, North Dakota. San uh, Haven. And that's also, I think, North Dakota is one of our... Uh, oh, yeah. North Dakota is one of our uh, people that listen to our show. So, yeah. 
I don't have the name. Chicka, 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 chicka. <laughs> um, anyway, so, like, if there's two names to it. Like, this is one of the places where it changed the names a lot. Yeah. So, okay, so in 1909, the uh, state legislature set aside, like, um, $10,000 for the institution. Yeah. And it was placed near slash the center. You'll understand this part because I didn't. It was placed near slash like the center of the Canada border. More than the population center. But it's in North Dakota, so I didn't understand that. <coughs> it's closer to the uh it's closer to the uh, Canada and US border, right? Is that basically what it's saying? I think so. Yeah. Then I guess any other it's kind of like uh, where Uncle Mikey lives in Westville. We're like right there, like right there on the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas. Kind of like that. I guess. Yeah, that's probably what they mean. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Like I said, not good with my geographic. So, anyway, the construction for the institution, whatever it was, when it first started out, began, um, and it got delayed for lack of funds because they only got 10 grand, but they needed 50 grand. Dang. So where'd they come up with the other 40? Well, um... <laughs> Who'd they have to kill? <laughs> they had donations and stuff like that, but, I mean, they don't really say. I really don't know. Um, it opened in the fall of 1912. And then when it first started running and operating, the average daily rate to be treated there for, like, I guess it started out as a tuberculosis uh, place was just like if so if you went in and you're like I have tuberculosis or I think I do I'm sick you just had to pay a dollar fifty really yeah how the heck did they pay for well back then back then it was times yeah time. you so, could you could then, you could get a tank of gas for ten cents and then three do three dollars three years later it went up to seven dollars ooh so just think now to go to D B in an asylum like that's like seven hundred dollars a day I know I know it's ridiculous um, and this is another one of those places it's like self sufficient. They had cottages. Uh, in place. well, see, probably too. That's probably another reason why it was kind of cheap to people to stay there. Yeah, well, because I see this is also like one of those tuberculosis, tuberculosis centers. Yeah, and then it was like a also sort of like a state asylum thingy, so it was a little bit of both. Yeah, it was a you know, when TB started. Started oh, yeah, that, when that I TB did. came down, man, it was kicking everybody's butt. That's what's going to happen with the corona. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so they built, uh, like, cottages on the property, you know, for the staff to go stay into, you know, for for this, for that, whatever. And see, they don't even do that much anymore around places. Mm -mm, no, there's very, very few. That are self-sufficient like but that. But there's not really any. Because, like, even your prisons like that back then were, especially in the south. Yeah, there's not any really anymore. Um, and it also operated as a satellite hospital for the North Dakota Institution for the Feeble-Minded at uh, the Grafton State School. So, like I said, yeah, it was a um, institution for the mentally ill, or what they said were mentally ill and handicapped. Yeah. And also the TB people. So TTB. Um, I'm also going to start saying TB instead of tuberculosis every time. Go ahead. That's what everybody says. <laughs> or back then, another name they'd call you is Lunger. Hey, Lunger. What? Because <laughs> it basically it is a disease, I believe, in your lungs. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so in 1913, remember, it, only, it opened in 1912. So in 1913, they only had 12 patients. <laughs> only 12 patients. Compared Why not 13? <laughs> Were they scared? <laughs> Compared to how the other places have ran, that's yeah. really good. Well, yeah, because the other places you said, well, they was only meant to have 100 patients, and they had like three They had three hundred within a year. Yeah. So in the 1920, they had 90 patients. And then in 1922, they had 140 <laughs> patients. And it never did say how many like they could have in capacity, but it never went over like 200, I don't think. Jeez. So like, but there was also back then, like whenever it started coming out, there's a lot of TB centers. I noticed that. There was so yeah. many. And this place was a two-in-one, so, um, and it's going to get a little bit confusing because it's going to have, going back and forth with the TB history and the, um, state school history, but just stay with me. So, the state school slash institution for the field minor is called the Grafton School, so I'm just going to say that. 
Grafton School of Arts. So in the 1950s, the Grafton School um, sent some of its mentally handicapped patients to that uh, TB center. So that's whenever they collided in the 1950s. Um, and then eventually the TB patients were treated at home with medicine and stuff like that. Oh, gosh. When that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then by 1960, <laughs> 1,300 mentally handicapped patients were treated. So Whoa, how'd they go from 12 to 13? Well, hundreds. That's, well, because they were combined with oh, the that's TB, right. and then they started sending the TB patients home. Yeah. They were going to die and stuff like that. Or, like, this is, the, I guess, the only time I that. Cause most well, because that are, TB, they now, I don't think they never, I mean, I think, I know we got, you got a, there's medicine for it now, but I don't, I don't think really back wasn't. then there really was Well, when they start cutting out with it, they give them the medicine to make them go home. And then it took over as a mentally, and, and yeah, so... Um, and the Grafton State School and the Stein Haven TB Center just collided into one big thing. Um, the state school, the Grafton State School place took control of the Stein Haven, the TB Center. They took in full control in 1973. So, that happened. But because of the medicine that came out, like, in the late 1950s slash 60s, people and patients were, you know, discharged and home and all that. Well, patients went from, like, 1,300 to, like, 6. So, like, the TB center closed, and the patients that were at Grafton State School that were sent over there got sent back. Because, uh, yeah. So, oh, sorry. I was, I, sorry. Okay, so, yeah. So, they sent the mentally ill patients back to the Grafton State School and closed the other one, and um, it said at least like 400 employees disappeared. Never said they were fired. 400 plo employees just disappeared. Yeah. Never Not said. at one time, right? Maybe through the course of the time? Yeah, I, get, I don't know, but that's like a lot of patients. Yeah. Within like 1912 to like 1990. Yeah. It never said if they died, they ran away, they got TB. They what just happened? lost them. Yeah, it never did say what happened. So, the Turtle Mountain band of Chippewa Ch Chippe <laughs> it's um, an Indian tribe yeah it's an Indian tribe purchased um, the San Haven school from the state in uh, 1992 oh cool well one girl went into it and she was giving her experience about like how it looked and stuff and she said all the windows were broke and the doors and everything or broke like the doors were off the hinges and it was just a complete and utter mess the walls were removed like the wallpaper was oh yeah and it looked gross so nasty yeah. and the elevators were like crushed like the metal like was just like crushed in oh my like, gosh had, like beat the elevators and there was um an attempt to burn down the building because there was like a bunch of like burn marks on the building oh my god so um there's also been, like, fires at the hospital. Like, after it closed, like, I guess, like, little false fire, fires would, like, break out. But they would go out. It was weird. Mm, more mysterious fires at the insane silence. Yeah, I couldn't, I didn't hear anything about it. And now that I'm thinking of it, that is weird that we both had. Yeah. Something like that. Um... <laughs> And it's on, this show has been on Ghost Adventures. Oh, God. St. Haven Sanatorium or the TV Center, whatever. I don't, it had like three different names. So Is like, that that big one they did with the, uh, it had the big old breezeway so they could push the beds like out onto the balcony? Mm. And that, that. No, I, that was another one I talked about. Okay. Well, there was a lot of big old TB centers like that back in the day. Yeah, well, because their treatment before the medicine was like, oh, a lot of sunlight and reassurance and all yeah, that. Yeah, so. sunlight and a lot of fresh air. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if one of the hauntings started exactly, or I don't know how much the building is left, but people say that they can... Um, so the Indian people don't, the Indians don't own it anymore? No, they do. Oh. But I don't, I guess it's private property, but I Oh, well, yeah. People obviously still trespass. Yeah. And before, I guess before they got it, people went and got on it. and st I don't know. But, I mean, there's still going to be ghost stuff. Oh, God, yes. Unless there are articles and stuff if they go and trespass. So, but I don't know 
how when the ghost stuff started or whatever because of how how many places it was and yeah. stuff like that. So you can see the apparitions of like the nurses and you can hear baby crying yeah. and you can hear a bunch of noises. And they say the fifth floor is the most haunted floor. And then there's a bunch of myths and legends about the place. Like one of them is that a trespasser fell down an elevator shaft and died. Mm. So like I don't know what all happened or how many people have died, but they say that it's like really really haunted. So let's go yeah, explore yeah. that place. Sure, I'll push you down the elevator shaft. See, I don't know how I would handle freaking hearing babies cry, man. Me neither. I don't. I don't know. And with like the insane asylums, a lot of them like depending on how busy they were. Like this one had like thirteen thousand. Like they would get like just have sex a lot and get pregnant, but like the babies would do their they were messed up. I don't want to say messed up and get anybody offended, but they were like, they to the doctors, they were messed up, so they get put down. Or like, so oh my God. Down. Jeez. So like, you know, there's <laughs> so much history, but that's, that's all I it's got. It's just crazy how they just brushed stuff under the rug back then. Just know so like, nonchalantly how. Like little they cared for human life. I know. Just, psh, I don't know. Well, I mean, I know I'm a mean person, but like, I would never. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Be like, oh, you're retarded. I'm gonna get yeah. you like a fish. You know what I mean? Like Jesus. Oh, he was. Oh, she was. She was just a prostitute. She, she was died. Oh well. Instead of a brown haired girl, I don't want her. Like that's literally what it was, yeah. and it was. <laughs> I don't. Pretty much. It's like I said back then, man. If you got, if they thought you had a hint of anything, they sent you to the to them places. Yeah. What you got for us, Daddy? All righty, I got the Stowe Lake. The Stone Lake is in San Francisco. It's part of the Golden Gate Park. The entire area has a dark side. It's a place where murders and uh, people commit suicide. Wow. And a woman lost her baby in the lake. Um, that, yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, what till you hear that? She should have been paying better attention. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. First story is about the woman. There was a woman in the park one day, you know, out with her baby, pushing her around in the stroller, having a little afternoon fun, afternoon breeze with the baby. And, of course, she sat down by a bench to talk to a woman, so she put the stroller, you know, right there by the bench. When she got to talking to the woman, wasn't paying attention to the baby. And I guess back then, you know, how the, the ones now have locks on them? Yeah, the, 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 the ones back then, don't they? Yeah, I don't think that had a uh, lock on it. Yeah, if you didn't hold on well, to it, your baby would have thrown down the hill. Yeah, well, she uh, was talking, you know, turned to the side and talking to a woman, not paying attention. And the baby, I guess, went off into the lake and nobody noticed anything. And then when she turned around, she was like, my baby, my baby, has anybody seen my baby? And nobody seen it. And the last thing she did was jump into the lake after her baby and she never returned. They never found her body. Of course, when that's happened in the early 1900s, there really wasn't any way to go diving and search for the body. I mean, they had kind of people swimming around trying to find her, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, if you were to do that, like, if that happened now, I mean, there was, like, oh, yeah. a diving crew and everything Oh, God, like that. yeah, like, but yeah. Then it was just like, oh, kick your feet in there and see if you can feel a body. Yeah, she uh, jumped into the lake after her baby, and she never came back. And they even made a statue for her and put it there. And that ties yeah. into some of the creepy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. She turned around, and of course, her baby was gone, and she was flipping out, going, You see my baby? See my baby? All right. Have you seen my baby? Okay. And here's the uh, story about the statue. You know, I told you they made a. Uh, the statue of Joe Statue. For her. Oh, wait. I, got, I went too far ahead. I got to start with the legend, with the, the legend, how it goes. <laughs> The legend goes, if you go to the lake at night, you'll hear, like, weird stuff happening. And you're just, you know, here's some un unpleasant stuff. Stories have been told of a woman coming out of the lake, you know, and asking, have you seen my baby? And another legend is the statue that they built for the woman in honor of her, you know, and her baby. Yeah. Uh, the statue, they say, sometimes will actually turn and be like, hey, have you seen my baby? The statue will talk. That's what they say. Um, I'm 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. We're wow. <laughs> yeah. Just think if you were drunk off your butt and you went over out there and you was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, wow, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I think I'm drinking too much. <laughs> I don't want to call it quits. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I don't like that. Like, like no. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go, where is it? I lost my place. I hate it when I'm reading through this and then I start talking and getting into the story and I lose my place. So sorry, guys. I'm, I don't like having dead space in my podcast like that. Yeah, we don't. But okay, if you go, okay, okay, if you go there in a group of cars, they will stall out all of a sudden at the same time. <laughs> and then if you go to the lake and say, uh, if you say, uh, "Lady in uh, lady in white, lady in white, lady in white." And then say, I have your baby. She will appear and ask if you see my baby. Dude, that's kind of like the Mary, um, Bloody Mary legend. Well, one, there's like so many. But like one of them I heard is like, wow. One of them I heard um, is like if you look in the mirror and you say like, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, yeah. Bloody Mary, I have your baby. She'll pop out and she'll be like, where's my baby? That's like creepy. The one I, we, always, we always heard when I was growing up as a kid was the... Uh, Say your name three times fast, you know, and then you open your eyes and you'll see red, uh, red eyes staring back at you in the wind in the mirror. Yeah. Or I've heard the other one where she'll scratch your tongue. Uh, you. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Ew. What happens if you go there alone? Does she like try to take you? I don't know. No one's ever been attacked by them so far, but since 1908. The first story of the lady in white, the, oh yeah, 1908 was the first story of the lady in white that was written. And in ni since uh, 1920, yeah, 1920, there's been reports of a police officer walking around. <laughs> yeah, and they don't really, no one's really researched it to see if, what happened to him or anything. Uh, she done and killed the police officer. Yeah. She's like, huh, you didn't help me find my baby. But it's just like since 1890, since they established it as a state park and all that, like I said, people have been going there to commit murders, homicides, and nobody knows why. Because when they kill themselves, they never leave a, never, I can't even talk, never leave a suicide note to just kill themselves. Maybe it's like that lady's like, oh, my baby's gone. I'll so everybody too. die. Well, that's what the kicker is. The baby story happened like I think the... Uh, early 1900s. Dang, so that one's been a long, long Yeah. Long. But there's all sorts of spooky stuff out there, they say. And when I, I see this, is not, I need to get the other computer in here and get it set up so we can look at the pictures. It's a real creepy kind of lake. It's not like a real big, it's basically just one of them lakes to go and uh, do your paddle boat and stuff on. Oh, it's like not, okay. Yeah, but it's it's a creepy looking little old lake, man. <laughs> And then, it, then, then it, they try. I guess they try to make it look not as creepy and put like geese and swans in there. You mean goose? Yeah. <laughs> and and swans in there to make it look, you know, a little bit normal, but it just makes it look even creepier. <laughs> but you, a lot of them turn up like. Yeah, that. and it did. It showed a picture of the woman's statue too. Uh, but that's messed up, man. I, I mean, I'd crap, I'd crap my pants, man. I'd be sitting there in the park and. <laughs> That statue, statue like, go, have you, you seen, seen my baby? My baby? <laughs> and they say sometimes you can just be sitting there at night and she'll come out of the, she'll walk out of the, out of the lake. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's, that's normal around these parts. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like, you know, if this podcast stuff ever starts paying, paying off for us, we got a lot of places to go explore. We're going to go to the Queen Mary first. Oh, no, we're going to go to the scariest place. We're going to find the scariest place where we know we'll get definite, <laughs> get some definite stuff. I don't want to poop my pants on the very first ghost hunting thing. <laughs> okay, so I know I've already done a territorial, territorial prison, but I did one. I don't remember where I did it. I did it in another place. This one is in, hey, this one's in Montana again. You and your prisons. Okay, so this one is Deer Lodge, Montana. So, 
This one is kind of started in the Wild West days. <laughs> so it's kind of been there for a little bit. So you know yeah. some stuff happened. Okay, so an attempt to 